can I file for divorce without an attorney? I am frequently asked this question, and the answer is yes, you can. Now, that doesn't mean I think you should, but a lot of people do. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to file for absolute divorce. Now, bear with me, this is one of my longer videos, but I'm going to walk through all the steps involved in the process of filing for absolute divorce. Also, please, 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 watch until the end of the video because I'm also going to give you some really important information that you need to know if you are going to try to do this on your own. First thing you need to know is what do I need to file? You'll need to file three documents to get this process started. Your complaint for absolute divorce, which is where you lay out the facts that the court needs to know in order to grant the divorce. Your civil summons, which alerts the other party that an action has been filed against them and a service member affidavit, which tells the court whether or not the other party serves in the military. Now, a couple of things that are really important here. First, these forms should be filled out before you go to the clerk's office. The clerks aren't going to do it for you. Your complaint and the service member affidavit need to be notarized. Make sure you have that done before you take the forms into the clerk's office. Most of the time, you're not going to find a notary at the courthouse, so you wanna make sure that you get this done beforehand and make sure that you have copies of everything. Don't just take in your originals. The clerk's office is going to stamp and keep your original, and then they're going to return your copies to you. So I tell people to make sure you take three copies. Now, when you file these documents, you're also going to owe a filing fee. The filing fee for absolute divorce is $225. The cashier's office is not going to take personal checks. So you need to make sure that you have a cashier's check, a money order, cash, or credit or debit card, because that filing fee is going to be due at the time of filing. Once you file the documents and pay the filing fee, now it's time to serve the other party. There are two ways this is typically done. The first is service by sheriff. If you choose to go this route, you'll take a copy of all of your documents over to the sheriff's office, hand them to them, you'll pay a $30 service by sheriff fee, and they'll take care of the rest. The other route is service by certified mail. If you choose to go service by certified mail, then you'll take a copy of all your documents to the post office. You'll fill out the certified mail slip as well as the return receipt slip. Now, this is really important. That little green return receipt is required for proof of service. That's what they're going to mail back to you to show you that the other party was served. So once you receive that green receipt back, you're going to fill out your affidavit of service. Again, this is a form that must be notarized. You'll fill out that form, have it notarized, attach the receipt, the return receipt, that green slip, and you'll take it to the clerk's office for filing. Once the other party is served, they have 30 days to answer the complaint. So you'll have to wait the 30 days. Once those 30 days pass, if there's been no response filed or if they haven't disputed any of the facts contained in your complaint, then you can file your motion for summary judgment. Your motion for summary judgment is basically telling the court there's no issue with any of the facts in the complaint and the divorce should be granted. At this time, you're also filing a notice of hearing. The notice of hearing alerts you and the other party to the date that the court will consider your motion for summary judgment on your complaint for divorce. Now, some counties require the parties to be present on the date of hearing, some counties don't. You'll need to check with the clerk's office in your county to know whether or not you need to be present on that date. When you file your motion for summary judgment and notice of hearing, you're also going to owe a $20 notice of hearing fee. Again, make sure you have appropriate form of payment. You'll send these documents to the other party and wait for your hearing date. Now, before your hearing date, you should also submit to the clerk's office your judgment of divorce and certificate of divorce. These are the forms that will be presented to the judge for the judge to sign so that your divorce can be granted. On the hearing date, if everything was done properly and there's no issue as to the facts contained in the complaint, then your divorce will be granted. Now, that's the process and the steps involved with filing for absolute divorce. But there is one really important piece of information for you to know. If you think you may have claims for alimony or equitable distribution, the distribution of marital assets and debts, and that divorce is granted, you are waiving those claims. Those claims cannot be filed after a judgment of absolute divorce is entered. 
So if you think you may be entitled to spousal support or you think there is a claim for equitable distribution that needs the court's attention, you really, really need to speak with an attorney before you start that process of filing for absolute divorce. Because once the judgment is entered, you cannot go back and file those claims. So this is the process of filing for absolute divorce. Those are the things you need to know. But if all of that sounded really confusing, then give me a call. I'll help you through the process.